Hello, hello everyone. I'm very sorry about this. So I explained to Gil what to do. So Gil is Tama Postcard podcast, by the way. So Gil is a actor from America. All right. He played in uh, many films, but one favorite one that he played is sorry about this and thank you guys is uh, the in that poet society all right okay so what i am going to do but he is actually on instagram he just doesn't know how to join so gil there's a camera with a plus you press on it to see what the comment box is you press on it yeah and you just yeah, the struggle is real. Some people, some of my guests, it happens, okay? So where the comment is, uh, camera, uh, the plus, just request, okay? So, oh, yeah. Do I sound good? Some of you said the, the sound is back. Okay. So sorry about this, girl. And thank you for your time. I know uh j walkings i know um instagram back then was so straightforward now there's so many things that it's annoying yeah so all right right i don't know why it says unable to join okay yes i wonder if he's using um in a computer in a computer is it the same way as in a phone that's my problem invite so when guys can somebody tell me when i press invite do you, where does the invitation end up because you asked me this question it's in the same as in a computer okay so when you invite someone where does the invite shows that's my question yeah because in a message box okay so have a look at the message box yeah i've invited him a few times oh bless him this is gosh i'm also learning okay all right accept there you go i've accepted fingers crossed fingers crossed i've accepted yay well hi <laughs> oh my god thank you i can't use my um desktop so i have to use this oh, oh so you're using the oh. desktop that's why can you hear Okay. Can you can you hear me? Okay. I can hear you just fine. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I want to see you as well, fully. There you go. Perfect. Welcome, Gail. How are you today? You okay? I'm good. How are you? I am great. So you're in America. Is it as hot as in the UK right now? How hot, hot is it there? Thirty-three degrees, and we Brits are not used to this. We are not used to this weather. <laughs> we should be autumn. We should. It should be cold over here. So, really? wow. lovely. That's better. I, I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can. Can you hear me? Yes, lovely. So you are Gail Henson. So yeah. please tell us. Uh, when did you start um, acting lesson? When did you start in acting? Yeah. Well, uh, I was in high school um, and got was very fortunate to study with a um, a teacher named Mr. Kelly up in Seattle, and um, he taught me all the basics. But at a certain point, uh, given his generation. He, um, you know, he, he, he told me, he said, yeah, I've taught you all I can, and you're either going to have to go to um, Los Angeles, work in television, film, or go to um, uh, New York City and learn how to be a real actor, real actor. <laughs> and, 
and uh, you know, taking the challenge, I arrived in Manhattan, um, 1980, New Year's Day, um, and uh, I knew nobody, so I I did know enough to go down to a studio called HB Studio. <clears throat> and I studied with Herbert Berghoff, who was married to Uta Hagen, uh, one of the great teachers. And um, then I, I stayed with a couple other people who were there. One was a method teacher, uh, Strasburg's method. Um, I think I was too young to, to study that. So <clears throat> I didn't really enjoy that so much, but I you know, pulled in the, uh, the essentials of that approach. And uh, then I studied with Stella Adler a little bit. And um, and that prepared me for the person who ultimately became my my uh, my mentor, which was Sandy Meisner. And I studied with him for <clears throat> a while. Um, he went from being my teacher to my mentor, my mentor to my friend. <clears throat> and it was shortly thereafter that um, that I was lucky enough to um, land the role that that I'm most known for, which is Dead Bugs. So, when you found out about this role, did you have to audition? So how was the audition process? Did you know which characters you're going to play or they told you this is the character we want you to play? Oh, no, no, no. I, I was actually uh, brought in um, for the character of, of Pitts. And yeah, yeah <laughs> I went in that on my fiance's um, birthday. And I foolishly told her, I said, I'm going to get this role for your birthday, <laughs> which was which is actually insane, but you know, love will do that to you. And um, <clears throat> the story goes, and I heard this from both Peter and Wendy Weir, that they were at the hotel watching the uh, the videotapes of the various actors who auditioned for the various roles. And unbeknownst to me, because I was nobody, and uh, they had been looking for someone to play the role of Charlie for quite some time. Now, there was a previous iteration of the of the film that Jeff, Jeff Canoe was going to direct, and they cast the entire film, and they built sets, and I believe, I don't think they actually shot, or maybe they shot a week or something like that, and then they pulled the plug, Disney pulled the plug, and they burned the sets. That was it. And so, um, I believe Robin signed on, and Peter signed, signed on. Peter did some some work on the screenplay. But over the course of casting, <clears throat> they'd seen hundreds of people and hadn't quite found their Charlie yet. And so they'd gone to England, they'd gone to all the major cities in America a few times. And um, so after that exhaustive search, they still hadn't found their Charlie. And um, Wendy and Peter were at their hotel room going through the dailies, uh, selects from the casting director and they skipped right over me because uh, Peter had the fast forward button going. And and Wendy said, stop, stop, go back to where I was and said, that's your that's your Charlie. <laughs> so then Peter watched it again and went, okay. So they called me back. I went back in. Uh, they get, I mean, the, the call back was several pages long. Uh, so went in, did reading for it. A couple days later, um, wonderful man named uh, Andy Welton, a good friend who was working with Peter at the time, called me up and said, they're going to offer you the role. Uh -oh. So I just, that'll be uh, uh, on Monday. So I'm just telling you so you don't have to be worried over the weekend. It was very sweet. That's lovely. So I wanted to ask you this, and I'm sure on behalf of everyone, uh, Charlie, you make this character your own or everything you acted was in the script? Because I feel some of them it was improvisation, but then again, was it all in the script or did you improvise some of it? Uh, that's a really great question. Um, I was a decade older than the, uh, the, the uh, next oldest uh, actor, and that was Robert Sean Leonard, sweetheart of a man. Yeah. Um, we, we became good friends during shooting. And um, the thing about it is, if you really go back and you look at it, um, Bobby's character, uh, Neil, has a, has a character arc. Starts somewhere, goes through these things that impact him, create the kind of pressure that that uh, forces him to make the choices in the script. And to this day, it's one of the greatest performances I've ever witnessed being created moment to moment with Bobby working on Neil. 
And if you look at Ethan's character, Todd, he has a char uh, character arc as well. You can see the beats of, you know, written beats of, you know, where he starts, where he goes, how he ends up. Um, the same with um, Robin, Robin's character of Mr. Keating. You can see the beats of beginning, middle, of an end. Uh, same with um, Josh Charles as uh, Knox. You can see the romantic arc. Uh, the rest of us didn't really have uh, written character arcs per se, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, for me, I just happened to show up, uh, Charlie shows up at eventful moments and does something impactful. So it was up to me to figure out how to string those, those moments together, the scripted moments, you know, like a, um, like, like pearls, right? To create yeah. the, the continuity of it. And so that's was really wonderful. Where does that come from, you know, to create this moment? What is he doing? Why is he doing it? It comes from somewhere about something to someone, um, which is what I was trained to do by Sandy Meisner. Every mm -hmm. moment meaning. Um, and then in terms of, of, of some of the more spontaneous moments, Almost, we were working with Robin Williams, who's just his spontaneity, his, his improvisational abilities were beyond compare. Yeah. So we I don't know that we were ever told, yeah, make stuff up. If you feel it, say it. But, you know, there, there was a little bit of that creative uh, freedom given to us by Peter, as long as it was um, truthful to the circumstances, the relationship and, and the moment at hand. So there were some, and you know, part of me is a little chagrined this many years later, thinking about how hard the amazing Tom Schulman, you know, worked to make this Academy Award winning screenplay. Yeah. You know, and, and being young and uh, full of energy. Yeah. Embodying the character and, and, and having the hubris to improvise you know, a handful of, of moments actually made it into the film. And I feel very blessed um, that we had the environment where that was nurtured and accepted. That's amazing. And you guys, old actors, are you still, you know, in touch today sometimes? sometimes. Like all the ones, <laughs> all the ones acted with you. <laughs> sometimes. Yes. Uh, no. uh, uh, Ethan and Bobby, uh, everybody stayed in. New York, even Bobby, Josh, uh, Alalon and Dylan ended up in Los Angeles. Uh, James uh, is in New York. And I came to, to LA at a certain point where I just needed to find work. Um, but this was before cell phones, this was before email, this is before all that stuff. Um, so, so, yeah, we fell out of touch for quite some time. Uh, yeah, I mean. And then uh, I was working as a <clears throat> as a VP of development um, at a uh, uh, production company in Los Angeles. And I saw Dylan walking down the street with uh, Chris McQuarrie and pulled over. I was driving. I pulled <laughs> over. I was looking for you guys forever. <laughs> uh, so that uh, led us to hanging out, recon <coughs> reconnecting. And Dylan's maintained his relationship, a very close relationship with Al Alonso. Then we reconnected. Um, and then the three of us went to Norman Lloyd's birthday party. Uh, I forget which one, like 103 or something. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I think about two years ago, um, we were all invited to a, a, a Zoom birthday party, I guess, uh, to celebrate uh, uh, Dylan's birthday. And I, I didn't know who was going to show up, but... Uh, I was a little bit late, like today. That's okay. um, technology, That's I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, yes, Josh was, was there. I had just left before I signed in. Um, Ethan uh, was busy, so he didn't uh, participate. But it was really wonderful to, to reconnect with uh, James and, um, and, and Bobby. That's lovely. So what do you think of the... I mean, the film was made in 1989, and we are in 2023, and people are still talking about it. So how, how do you feel to be part of such an amazing uh, cultural film, a legacy of the film? What does, what does it feel like? Um, it's a blessing, really. It's, it's um, none of my doing. 
really, I was just invited to participate in the, in the making of it, to, to be part of a, a wonderful ensemble in a, a brilliant script, uh, genius direction. I mean, I, you know, Johnny Seals, camera work, the sound work, the costumes. I mean, everything about it was, was blessed and you knew it while you were on set. Wow. Uh, there was a, um, we're in the last day of shooting, and um, one of the grips was um, down the, down a hallway, and he's one of the guys who moves all the heavy stuff. And um, he is a biker guy, long hair, Harley T-shirt, and um, and he was weeping. And uh, yeah, asking him, you know, what's wrong? He said that. He his mentor, the person who brought him into his job, said, you'll get one job where it'll be the best job you'll ever have in this industry. And he was weeping because he was like, I just had that one job, and now I feel like I can't look forward to another one. And that's the way for everybody on set. Everybody was just over the moon about giving, giving all, giving everything. If we were losing the light, those, 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 the people, um, the griffs and gaffers, they were picking up these massive lights and running into position to be able to capture the, capture the, the moment for, for Peter, for Johnny. Yeah. So it's, it, it, it's, it's very much a blessing. It's certainly unexpected. I don't think anybody goes into anything, um, anticipating that it's going to be, um, that it's going play forward as a cultural touchstone, a cultural touchstone um, for us in America, let alone the world. And it, and it has, and, and it's very humbling. Um, you know, for a long, long time, I didn't engage uh, with, with the fan base because um, it's not about me. That, that's, that's a character. I'm, you know, I'm, I played Charlie, I'm not Charlie. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, um, you get people, kids mostly, who are struggling. And they just want to be seen, they want to be felt, they want to be heard. And um, one fan right, reached out to me and um, was like, are you, are you, are you, the, are you B. Gail Hansen? I was like, well, yeah. I'm not, I don't know why anybody else, well, anybody else would want to be. Um, <laughs> I was just joking and being kind of, you know, not being dismissive, but just like, you know. That's me. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and the thing, the, the, you know, his, his response just moved me. And it was like, you know, um, I hadn't realized how un, unkind it was that I wasn't um, engaging with people who had been reaching out even if I don't know that they were reaching out or where they were reaching out, which is why through, through um, all the up and down to Twitter and people leaving Twitter, I've, I've stayed there because um, uh, it's not so much I matter, it's just that it matters, that people feel seen, felt, heard, and that they can come together, you know, as a community. Yeah. Because, um, you know, here we are in, in, in 2023, uh, 21st century, you know, when I was a kid, you know, the you know, space race and all that stuff, so much of the future was, was promised to be something wonderful. And there are many wonders. Yeah. But it wasn't anticipated or projected that we would um, have these uh, culture wars to hurt each other. Yeah, and, I actually know what you mean. We have racial disparities, uh, economic disparities, um, gender identity disparities that are polarizing people rather than bringing them together. And there's something about the dead poets um, community that is inclusive because the struggle in that film uh, is um, the struggle being felt by by each of these young individuals. And so if, if there's some way that I can uh, participate 
and support, you know, as, as an old man, um, that's a blessing. And, and I'm thankful for the, their gift of, of asking me to, to uh, be a part of it. Does that yes, that, that makes that so much sense, yeah. Because talking of this, this is, I think I reached out to you about a decade ago, or maybe a bit before, I'm not sure. But I remember when we spoke about, you know, when uh, Robbie Williams sadly passed away, I remember I reached, I reached out to you and I said, what, what do you feel about this? Oh, my captain, my captain that went viral. Like people didn't even really know the film. And now this, this tweet comes out and everybody started to speak about the film again, about that community that you spoke about and Robbie Williams, what an icon it is. And I remember it's been nearly a decade I've been speaking to you and I like that you reach, you answered. I wasn't expecting that. That's, that's rare that actors answers the tweets. I mean, many of them, they just, I won't say they just regard the fan, but I know they're very busy people. But I like that you reached out, you reached out to people. And that's why so many young people are watching today because you are also, I'm sure some, in some way you reached out to them. So you, you feel like the love of your audience and you replicate this love. This is what I like about you. You're not the actor that's like, you know, arrogant. No offense. I, I'm not sure actors are arrogant. But I like that you're very compassionate. You're very lovely. You're very down to earth almost. So is that how we can describe yourself? I don't know about um, arrogance in the, most of the acting um, uh, community. I think it's more, um, there's a little bit of, um, a, a little bit of terror between who you actually are and being, you know, recognized out on the street. That's true. And very honestly, and um, some bad results have happened in real life for actors and actresses um, where someone who was not quite mentally healthy um, showed up uh, at their home and the, that actor's not with us anymore. So I don't know if the, if the um, That's the, the barrier between um, uh, fan communities and, and actors is so much um, arrogance or detachment so much as um, a protective impulse yeah. because um, so many people will, will rush up to you and go, oh my God, like, like, like they know you. Well, they do know you from a film, but we don't know each other, you know? Yeah. Uh, like right here, right now, I see you, you see me, we're getting to know each other. So we have a relationship, a real connection so that the next time I see you, if it's out on the street and you, you go, gee, and I go, hey, you know, how, <laughs> you know, I know where that comes from. I know you, and you do too. So we get into re relating to each other, which is based on a, a, a connection that's, that pre-exists. And, um, you know, I've even had that, and I'm nobody, um, people running up to me and going, you know, and it's a panic situation where you're yes. just going, oh, yes. I, oh, I don't know you. Okay. Am I safe? Okay. What's going on here? And then it's like, oh, okay. You want a picture? You want a? You want an autograph? You want to? You want to um, talk about how, what the film meant to you? Okay. You know. Um, but that's not always easily uh, no. negotiated. It, it can be scary. And I feel like from what you said, it's true. That makes sense. It's true that sometimes you forget. Uh, when you go out there, you're a regular person, you know, that character that you portray. So uh, after the Dead Poets Society, what other films did you participate in? What other films, what other projects did you have? A few things afterwards, a couple films and a, and, and a, and a TV show. Um, and then shortly thereafter, I was um, in a car accident. And so, Sorry to uh, yeah, it wasn't my fault. Um, but I was hit by, I was in my vehicle and I was hit by a drunk driver and um, they just messed me up physically um, uh, up here as well. Um, it took three people to get me out of the vehicle. Um, 
take me to the uh, emergency room um, for for a little bit there. Um, I was immobilized because they were worried that I could be paralyzed. So it was a pretty traumatic impact. Um, and it kind of changed um, the way I'm wired up, up here. Um, gave me a pro profound stutter, like a porky pig stutter. Um, took a long time to get over that. Took a lot of therapy, physical therapy, uh, some surgery to regain my physical self. Um, there's PTSD that went along with it. But um, like the way I used to uh, learn my work, you know, uh, do character work, um, memorization and all of that uh, had changed. And I, I had to go on a long discovery process of figuring out how I assimilate information and then activate it to be able to work as an actor again. Um, so during that time, uh, odd jobs like 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 I remember doing back before I got Dead Poets, um, and then uh, fortunately started working in development at a at a motion picture studio so that I did for a very long time, um, and then that, that studio uh, went bankrupt, and now I'm back to I've been teaching Meisner technique for quite a long time, um, and did a film last year with a with a wonderful. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, Shane Stanger, which is in uh, post production right now, and we're about to look at the final cut. Mm. So that you can't tell us anything. We we need to watch it. So when this is finished, I think we will find out about it. As maybe on your Twitter, maybe on Instagram, we're gonna find out about it. Um, sure, but I think I think Shane's um, plan is to take it through um, the festival circuit, beginning with hope. Uh, Sundance next year. Okay. Are you excited? Are you excited about this film coming out? Uh, yeah, of course. I mean, there's wonderful work uh, going on inside of it, and um, and it's an I believe it's an important small film. Um, so I'm excited for the project. I'm excited for the world to see it. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. I mean, I can't wait because some of the comments. Um, they are asking if you're still doing films, so now you sort of answer the question that you have one that is in, you know, post production, and is 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 there going to be any more after that, or are you still waiting for work to come your way? All of the above. Uh, am I still doing movies? No, I'm doing them again. <laughs> <laughs> on break, um, but um, you know we're on strike over here. Um, the uh, screen actors um, and um, the writers, and it's it's a very important uh, strike. It's it's a, it's a, an ex existential uh, crisis over here for creatives, um, not only just because of AI, but because of the downward pressure from uh, what was uh, celebrated as, as um, disruption, tech disruption in in the creative community, right? Of uh, making film, distributing film, um, which was a bonanza of uh, entertainment for audiences, you know, around the globe. But it led to the exploitation and downward pressure um, for profit uh, that could only come from one place. I mean, the hard costs of making a, a film or TV show are set. A camera costs this much for this many days for this many hours. Yeah. Cost that lights cost that right um, computers cost that editing cost this those are hard costs that are very difficult to winnow down the human cost of, of labor that's that's that seems to be the the um, most malleable place and so um, you know if you can get uh, people to do more work for less money then that that uh, those savings uh, migrate um, through uh, the studio, they no longer are recycled through production to create more productions, but rather these these pennies, nickels, dimes that become dollars, that become millions, that become hundreds of millions of dollars in savings at the expense of uh, the laborer, the actors, writers, everybody involved, every human person on a set. Um, that. Aren't really 
migrate up through the studio um, to the C-suite, right? And into um, the investors through, through dividends who are invested in the stock of the, uh, of the uh, streamer or the studio. And so that money is being extracted, that wealth is being extracted and distributed outside of the ecosystem where we create. So we're on strike in order to um, establish a fairer future that will allow for the survival of, of every creative uh, in front of the camera, behind the camera in this industry. So um, am I waiting for, for more work? Sure, but we have to resolve these issues first so that um, uh, it, it it's a survivable craft, not just for those of us who are involved with it now, but for those who are coming, you know, yeah. like the young people who, who potentially are watching this right now. And what we do here will affect what happens in the world, you know, in terms of filmmaking and television. Um, the uh, strike here uh, has triggered strikes as far away as South Korea, because even though we're being exploited and we are and some of us make a lot of money and some people like me make a little bit of money and we just continue to you know dream the dream um as exploited as we are the workers around the world in in creative crafts are are exploited even uh, more, uh have have more uh harsh exploitation you know uh than we do so hopefully what we do here affects everyone that's true, and I hope it gets resolved. As you were saying, and that's my final question, um, acting, you know, it's not easy. It's not easy craft. So what is your number one advice for young people that want to get into acting? Oh, uh, find a great uh, Meisner technique teacher. Uh, Sanford Meisner um, developed what, I, what has worked for me um, as the best way of evolving uh, a young human being into uh, using their true self under imaginary circumstances, right? And, and a lot of it comes down to um, using the truth of the self, what you know to be true that affects you emotionally, and then um, taking it through uh, the invisible uh, barrier between reality and imagination, uh, but using your emotional imagination in your mind's eye to conjure the as if under these circumstances. Um, and that's what I got from Sandy. Um, and, and I highly recommend uh, great training Good. if you want to training. do it. Because then it becomes reliable because actors show up. Yes, we, we get makeup and hair and we get um, uh, uh, wardrobe, but it's it really comes down to the word that's written by the by the screenwriter that that we um, create. Mm -hmm. with. Other than that, we really have nothing but ourselves to create from, and so it it is a craft, and it's it's but it's a skill that's easily learnable, you know. And over time, um, you can develop into a very relaxed strength. That's true. And that's exactly what you do. And I, I want to say thank you so much for joining me for your time. And I'm sure you're going to carry on with the, delighting all of us with your films. Uh, no, I'm not going to let you only watch Dead Boy Society where you are, where you, were, where you played, but I'm going to look up other films that you have done. So if my students say, oh, but who is this actor? Then I can tell them more repertoire of your films. So I want to say thank you one more time. And I hope you have a wonderful day and carry on being you, such approachable, compassionate. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're doing out there too for the kids. It's what it's all about. Yeah, that's it. So thank you so much again. Bye. Bye. <laughs>